You ran, farther and faster than your eyes could possibly keep up with. The sinister sound of deep thumps and the demolishing of lumber slowly becoming distant. Yet, with that in mind, you resumed onward, staggering through the closest thicket. After what seemed to be an eternity, you stop, and it dawns on you that the nearly crippling threat that had been looming over your head has finally dissipated, and you were standing in a minuscule clearing of the dense forest you had found yourself being lost in. You began to examine your surroundings, taking note of the way the sun shone through the trees above, the sound of Scytherism overtaking your seemingly insignificant being. The pleasurable sensation of the sun reflecting off of the soft, green mosses and the rough bark of the trees. You loved it. However, your state of eudaimonia couldn't last forever, as much as you wished it could, for you were still on the run from what or whoever that was. Your previously untroubled and calm observing rapidly turned into one of panic. You knew that your current state of safety couldn't last for long. With your frantic eyes, you see a cottage. No, a village? In a distance far past the tree line. Were you finally going to leave this forest? Dinky wasn't much of a drinker, per se. He would usually come only once, twice, or even three times in a month. However, lately, there's been something itching the back of his brain. He didn't like it. He wanted to be rid of the wretched sensation. He hadn't the slightest knowledge of what it could be about, but what he did know was that it'd be important. His face contorted into a grimace. He loathed the feeling of something meaningful resting upon his shoulders. It was why he enjoyed his job so much. If he didn't get the kill, then someone else will. Granted, all of his daily savings would be from the said kill, but at least that wasn't something he had to worry about too much. His best friend, and the barkeep of this fine establishment, as well as the owner of said tavern, Sero, noticed Dinky's dismay and decided to speak up. Hey dude. Hanta spoke up in an attempt to get the yellow-eyed male's attention. What's with a sour look? The blonde lightly jolted, surprised that he was being spoken to. It wasn't unusual that someone would make an attempt at conversation. If anything, it was quite the other way around. He was the type of person to not only babble his head off, but he was also the type to flirt. Not to mention that he was basically the local comedian. When the long onyx-haired male didn't receive a reply, he decided to answer for him. Is it because you still couldn't get a girl after your numerous days of flirting? Ladies talk. You do realize that, right? It's not about that, Hanta. The bounty hunter cut off in a harsh tone. Dengi also hated when people pry into his business. Though, he's a bit of a hypocrite in that sense. There's just... a feeling I'm getting. A feeling, huh? The barkeep queried in a teasing manner. Dinky glanced away from him, almost feeling the man's triangular grin pointing in his direction. Shut up. We both know that's not what I meant. It's more like... a gut feeling? Dinky recounted, ending in a question. <laughs> I'm sure it is, buddy. Saro snickered, moving to address the two men that had just entered from the large mahogany door. At the last statement of his raven-eyed ally, the blonde pouted and mumbled under his breath in a frustrated manner. Why is it that nobody listens to me? And at that moment, the man had a revelation. Why not just go and see where his feet take him? Each step you took made you realize how much agony your body was in. Nevertheless, you continued onward. The only sounds meeting your strained ears were the ones of your dirtied feet pounding against the leaf-covered earth beneath you and the animals nearby. That was, until you heard something in the distance that made your eyes widen 
body lock up, and blood run cold. Far behind you, you could hear the thundering sound of the very same beast that had nearly mutilated your frame. Only this time, it was much, much faster. You were paralyzed. You could almost sense its bloodlust, its need to kill. You could feel its breath on your back. Unknowingly, your arms begin to wrap around your waist, and the hairs on the back of your neck begin to stand. The pounding only gets louder as you continue to stand frozen in place. As the distance begins to close and your peripheral begins to blur and darken, your mind has no plans on slowing. Is this it? Is this how I die? Why now? Why like this? Why not peacefully? A nice, quiet, and painless death. That's all I could have asked for. As the beast closes in, and your vision fulfills its fate of eternal darkness. Just then, something, or rather, some one, tackled you out of the way. Hey there, what's a cute little thing like you doing here being chased by a monster? The person asks. Your eyes begin to open once more, and they're met with stunning, golden eyes hovering over you. Your lips part, trying to find the words you wish to say so dearly. However, nothing but a gasp comes out as you are picked up princess-style and lifted off the ground in a quick movement. At that moment, you'd nearly forgotten about the beast. The only thing you could think about was the lemon-eyed blonde holding you. Say, do you mind if I set you down for a moment or two? He asked, moving briskly around the large, hairy creature. You nod, silently telling him it was alright. He swiftly moves behind a large bush and sets you down with a generous amount of care. As the man begins to stand, the question that's been on your conscience for what seems like an incredibly long time finally slips from your tongue. Who are you? You ask the man in the long cream jacket that was paired with a large black hat and a feather. He stands tall with his eyes closed and a sly smirk on his handsome face. Tis a pleasure. My name is Denki Kaminari. However, you can just call me the man of your dreams. And with that, the beast was slain.